It is Sunday, September 3rd, 2017, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. I know it's been a while. Uh, I've been working on this uh, online course for C Sharp, and so as part of that, I was coming up with some sort of exercise or code example that would be useful. And part of this was I wanted to kind of show off this essentially publicly, maybe even get some feedback and see what people thought about this prime number checking that I started doing. So I thought that was a really cool topic because prime numbers are used heavily in cryptography and you know they're one of the more challenging things that you can actually process. So if you wanted to do like a really long running process that takes time, crunching prime numbers can use up a lot of your CPU if you know what you're doing. So to make this a really quick video, well, I'm gonna do is kind of walk through this and hopefully you guys um, maybe you see something cool and you know, let me know or if you see something that you're like, hey, that's kind of dumb, you know, let me know. I'm open to ideas. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on this, but I want to see what people think. It's funny because there's a lot of prime number checking code out there and it's varied, you know, depending on the approach ranging from probabilistic, deterministic. In my case, what I wanted to do was just simply take the largest built-in long int, you know, which is the unsigned long int 64, which is a very large positive number that I can actually get prime numbers from. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, limitations because in reality, the thing gets all the way up to the largest U long and you find a prime in there, you're doing pretty good. And it's probably going to take you days to do that. So regardless of the approach. So the first thing I did was just come up with a, an enumerable that uh, dictates the set of valid prime tests. You're not going to test one, you will be testing two and then three. And then from that point on, it'll be all the odd numbers that will be tested. You wouldn't test any even numbers, right? Because they're always going to be divisible at two, but all of the odd numbers make sense to do actual valid prime tests. Otherwise, everything else is, is not worth even checking. Um, and this is for the idea behind if you wanted to get all of the primes in order, right? So to do that, I've also kind of take, I've taken that enumerable and I went ahead and for performance, which man, sometimes uh, I swear this is so cool. Being able to do things like as parallel uh, is, is pretty amazing when literally all you have to do is switch it on and off. So just to kind of demonstrate, so all I have to do is comment this out and then I'm gonna go ahead and change this to I enumerable. So with no parallel slash concurrency going on and we run this at 100,000. And so what it does is that it first, I just do for a sample, I grab the first 100 primes to make sure that the code's working right. And I can be pretty confident that 541 is gonna be the 100th prime. And at 100,000, it's only taking 0.4 seconds. So let's go up to tenfold. So with no parallel, uh, we get 9.2 seconds. But now let's go ahead and change it back to having it in parallel. And boom, 1.84 seconds. Now I don't have this, uh, I don't have the performance monitor up here. If I run it with zero concurrency, basically on one thread, then as you might imagine, it's only using about one, you know, one core. So if you have four cores, it's gonna be like one quarter of the amount of processing power. But if I run it in uh, full parallel, you can see it drops the processing time significantly, as well as you might imagine, it's actually filling out the uh, CPU uh, to its maximum that it can, which is really cool. So let's say like, for example here, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna bring up the CPU monitor here so you guys can see what happens. And I'm gonna hit enter. And I don't know if you can hear it, but my computer fans kicked in there pretty hard, <laughs> but it's really fast. So it's kind of like, it's not really demonstrating it enough. So let's try, uh, I mean, you have to keep in mind that every time you go up in number, it's kind of a magnitude because you're searching for a prime that it, primes get more scarce as you get bigger, right? So I'd be careful about like doubling. Doubling can do more than double the amount of time. So once again, uh, we're getting the CPU, all cores are just getting smashed. Um, I wonder if we can go ahead and see if uh, in uh, what the actual, right, let's look at logical processors. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, with logical processors even, we're seeing full, all of them fully taking advantage of uh, in this prime calculation, which is really cool because if you're gonna do any heavy math like this, you wanna make sure that you're optimized to 
use everything that you've got. Why would you want to only use one core and wait essentially anywhere from, you know, one to uh, an eighth of the time or depending how many cores, maybe you have a new CPU with 16 cores. Uh, you might be waiting around unnecessarily. So, so there's that. And that was kind of one of the cool optimizations. And I, I toyed around a lot with getting this to be just right and not kind of have additional overhead. And I really liked having parallel query be the output from, from this uh, values enumerable. And so as you can see, you know, and I needed to call as ordered because that's uh, an interesting part of that. So when you call as parallel, you can then immediately call as ordered, which will make sure that the state machine under the hood is essentially uh, feeding um, the, the subsequent checks and results in a proper way so that you're, you know, uh, you're the producer consumer queue under the hood is really doing things in order and reporting back in order. Because if I took out as ordered, you'll get essentially this, you'll get the results, but you'll get them in who knows what order they'll come in, which is kind of a, an interesting thing. Now, uh, what I did again was having this kind of prime numbers class. Originally, it was a static class, but I put it together, you know, as it's uh, as a class, so I could override it and have other types of tests. And so the other thing I did here was um, here's my is prime check. It's pretty straight. Well, here's the the public facing is prime check, which is not virtual. So basically, it's not meant to be overridden. It does all the simple stuff, like obviously checking to see if the cases of zero and one, because uh, they're not prime numbers, are false. And then two and three are kind of special cases too, because they're like the first two, and it's better to go ahead and check them right away and admit. And then lastly, the you know the last case, which is, is it a uh, is it a multiple of two, or if it's not a multiple of two, and it's not a multiple of three, go ahead and check the uh, use the internal prime uh, check, which is here. So there's also I added this to catch signed in, you know, signed integers, which is helpful. Uh, you know, long will be compatible with int and any of the other uh, smaller integers for this to do its check. Now, here we go. So here's our internal prime. Now, this is where it got interesting. Originally, I had two different methods. So one was this method, which, uh, you know, it's funny. I've had this and I've had this code for quite a while and I don't, I'm trying to find where it, I actually got this from. Um, but basically it does some, uh, I think, is it uh, factoring math, you know, so it's like the square and then two times and then one, it's one of the, uh, you know, it's, I think it's kind of an AKS check, but it only checks something at, from like the, from one level. I, I'm not a mathematician, but I know that it works. And then it's other competing, um, method was this square root and then they floor the square root and then we check against it here. And I thought this was uh, really interesting, but when I did my tests, what I found was is that this was fast up to a point, um, and then it started to slow down for larger numbers. And this is kind of an arbitrary number that I found that seemed like it was, you know, by setting a limit, it's better to switch off from this number to using this number. Now I think that's because of how fast these two operations are. Um, being how fast is a square root and how fast is converting an N64 after flooring, that might actually be a lot heavier than, uh, than this if it has to loop a lot. So I think that's part of what the, the problem is, is if there's a lot of iterations, this builds up over time, whereas this one is a little bit more efficient. You can see this is all very straightforward math. There's no functions, um, so it, it seems to work really well. And so then keep going here, you know, so we have this again, the, the main prime number class, then I even have a brute force uh, version that I, I engineered just to do kind of like double checking. Um, it's kind of long winded, but basically all it's done, doing is when it comes to checking for primes, you don't have to check the entire set, right? You know, if you're testing to see if 101 is a prime, then you can divide by half and then only check numbers from you know, uh, essentially two up to the midpoint of, of the of that number, because obviously the, if you can divide by two, right? So by limiting the set here, uh, I also do some as parallel inside here to kind of accelerate uh, it going faster. And so yeah, there's, there's that. I probably need to make a little bit more changes, but this, uh, I went ahead and, and this one's different because 
I uh, do this allow parallel after method that has a specific number that's passed to it. So in this case, when values, it's calling that number. So it's one of the things that I tested was when does paralleling uh, become effective? Because parallel does have a little bit of overhead, right? There's a little bit starting up and there's a little bit when it's wrapping up as well. So if you're going to do, you know, really straightforward number crunching, typically, you know, doing it in, in a single thread is going to be very fast. But if you've got some stuff that's going to take a lot longer, in this case, the reason why I'm using it as parallel is that there's this all method that essentially will have to go through, potentially go through every entry in all of the first half of these numbers that that keep building up in the brute force method and so if you know if it's over 100 uh, numbers go ahead and, and do it in parallel and then this one does a little bit different of an is prime check it's basically just taking and iterating the values and and returning them so uh, and when it says skip it's skipping two and three because Two and three are reported in the uh, public is prime. And then, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, so, you know, again, I've noticed that there's a lot of checks out there and there's a lot of approaches to um, finding prime numbers, including caching and things like that. Now, what I decided on was that there, I didn't necessarily want to be doing all this insane amount of caching. And what you find that these is prime checks are generally really fast. If you want to know if a number is a prime, and it's, you know, and if it's a number that's within the U-long range, in this case, uh, calling the default uh, is prime method here is actually pretty fast. Like, I mean, it's not like it's crazy. Now, finding two factors that are larger primes, that's a that's a whole other math problem in, in cryptography that I haven't, I, I might want to tackle, but I haven't gone down that route yet. Uh, you know, some of the other things is how long does it take to find all these values and and that's also been interesting. That's kind of like a performance check. Uh, how do I go faster? And, you know, I thought about using some way of like caching values, but I find that this doing it in parallel and running these these simple checks, if you're just going to look and you just want to know if it's a prime, it doesn't make sense to it seemingly doesn't really make that much sense to cache. It's just it's unnecessary. You could have some crazy dictionary or some set. Um, but when I tried to do, to do that, I just didn't see the benefit. I didn't see it going any dramatically faster. As you might imagine, going and doing a hash lookup inside of a, a hash table um, is is got its own little overhead. Whereas just doing simple math like this and doing some equality checks, it, it well, you can see here, this is not simple math. There is a loop. Um, but for the most part, most of these numbers, it seems like, you know, hey, Maybe there might be some benefit for larger numbers. I could see that when you start getting into crazy big numbers, but uh, within a smaller range, trying to store up all these numbers in memory, it just didn't seem to make any sense. So that was kind of that result. So I hope that video was interesting. Uh, you know, I'll leave a link to the code. Uh, I'll, I'll post this as a, uh, um, a gist. And if somebody's interested, this is done in uh, um, VS Code and .NET Core. And, you know, it's just one file. Uh, well, I have a, it's one file for the library. And then I have a, you know, uh, console application that was outputting that, but that anybody can put that together. So I hope you guys thought that was interesting. I know it's been a while. I know this is C sharp and not TypeScript, but uh, sometimes we had to do some different things. And this is more about, for me, it's more about performance, which I'm sorry, you know, C sharp's going to blow the door off a node or your browser. And so this was uh, really interesting to watch as the, like I said, the CPU cores just get gobbled up uh, by prime numbers. Um, if this video was something that helped you, uh, please give it a like and maybe share. Uh, you know, and we will see you next time. Thanks.